Washington, this is VOA News. I'm Ray Kugel reporting. U.S. troop withdrawal from Afghanistan slowing down. President Obama says the 9,800 American troops stationed in Afghanistan will remain there until the end of the year, despite earlier plans to cut them by half. Mr. Obama says the U.S. is determined to maintain the gains made by U.S. forces in the country. President Ghani is pursuing reforms to further strengthen Afghan security forces, including respect for human rights. And as part of the ongoing NATO mission, the United States will continue to train, advise, and assist Afghan security forces. During their White House meetings, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani said flexibility provided by the slowing of the U.S. troop withdrawal will be used to accelerate reforms to ensure the Afghan National Security Forces are much better led, equipped, and trained. Search efforts at the crash site of a German jetliner in the French Alps were suspended late Tuesday as night fell over mountainous terrain where officials say the lives of all 150 passengers and crew were lost earlier in the day. About a dozen specially trained mountain police were guarding the site in southeastern France as rescue teams prepared to begin retrieving bodies at daybreak Wednesday. Authorities say the German wings Airbus A-20 jetliner, 320 jetliner, en route from Barcelona, Spain, to the German city of Dusseldorf, went down without issuing distress signals. French authorities say one black box was recovered at the crash site and is undergoing analysis in Paris. A suicide bomber rammed his car into an army checkpoint in Benghazi, Libya, Tuesday. At least seven soldiers were killed. One report says two bombers may be involved. There's been no immediate claim of responsibility. This is VOA News. The UN Security Council expressed profound disappointment with the failure of South Sudan President Salva Kiir and rebel leader Riek Machar to finalize a peace deal. A council statement Tuesday again threatened sanctions against senior individuals whom it deems responsible for actions or policies threatening the peace, security, or stability of South Sudan. Yemen Shiite rebels made advances in southern Yemen Tuesday, clashing with rival militias loyal to the country's current president. The rebels, known as Houthis, entered the town of Al-Dalaya and fought fierce gun battles with militias who support Abdal Rab Mansur al-Hadi. To the north in Taiz province, the rebels and soldiers loyal to ousted President Ali Abdullah Saleh clash with anti-Houthi protesters. The soldiers opened fire on them, killing at least one and wounding several others. Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper says Canada will expand its military mission against the Islamic State group to include airstrikes on targets in Syria. Mr. Harper told Parliament Tuesday Canada will not seek the express consent of the Syrian government to launch the attacks. He said Canada must strike at the Syrian power base of the IS militants. President Obama says it is hard to envision a two-state solution with Israel and the Palestinians after Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's pre-election comments ruled it out. The Israeli leader insists he has not changed his long-held policy. Mr. Obama said the Israeli leader has put so many conditions on a two-state solution that it will be impossible to have one anytime soon. He repeated his view that an Israeli and Palestinian state side by side is the best way to achieve peace in the region. Economic reports published Tuesday show new home sales surging in the United States, while consumer prices rose slightly in February. The chairwoman of the U.S. Central Bank, Janet Yellen, says the economic data weakened the case for an interest rate hike. My colleagues and I continue to expect that as the effects of these transitory factors dissipate and as the labor market improves further, inflation will move gradually back toward our 2% of 
2 percent objective over the medium term. The central bank, known as the Federal Reserve, encouraged growth during the recent financial crisis by cutting the key interest rate to near zero. British Prime Minister David Cameron says he'll not seek a third term at 10 Downing Street if his Conservative Party wins the upcoming parliamentary elections. In an interview with BBC Television, Mr. Cameron pledged to serve a full five-year term, that is, if the party remains in government after the May 10th vote. He said he wanted to finish working on such issues as education and welfare reform. I'm Ray Kugel in Washington. That's the latest world news from VOA.